Hi everyone, my name is Sergey, and today we're gonna have a look at the Russian course on Buso.com. Buso is a language learning web platform where you can learn 12 languages. Right now I'm using Buso to learn Spanish and I like it very much so far, but today I wanna have a look at the Russian course. As a native Russian speaker, I just want to see if it, well, makes sense, first of all, and uh, well-structured, and if it's uh, beginner-friendly. What do I mean by beginner-friendly? You know, there is a Russian course on Duolingo, and I don't think it's beginner-friendly. Although, it's quite good, but it's not beginner-friendly, because, because you are supposed to know the Russian letters and how to read them before you take that course. A friend of mine wanted to take the Duolingo course, but she couldn't do that because she didn't know the Russian alphabet, she didn't know how to read it, read the letters, so she couldn't do the basic exercises. It turned out those basic ex exercises, they are not so basic. So now I'm gonna have a look at the Russian course on Busu and see if it, well, makes sense, if it's uh, well structured um, and if it's okay for beginners. All right, right now I'm looking at the lesson number one in that course. They have four levels, uh, A1, A2, B1, and B2. And A1 consists of 64 lessons. I really like how they structured the course because they cover uh, some, they give you some vocabulary, some grammar, some conversational phrases, but they begin the course with the very basics, with some very basic conversational phrases and of course the alphabet, which is great because it means that um, it's a beginner-friendly course. You don't, ha you don't have to know the Russian letters, the Russian alphabet, and know how to read them before you take that course. You can learn it from that course. So the lesson one is about how to introduce yourself in Russian, how to say hello, привет, in Russian, and how to say what, how to say what your name is. And it's really cool because you wouldn't want to give a lot of vocabulary and grammar and rules in the very first le lesson. It would be quite dis discouraging. So, and after that, mm, over the from the lesson two to seven, they give you the alphabet. You might think that it would take a lot of time to learn the alphabet, but actually, if you click on the lesson, you would see that it's, it takes only four minutes to finish it. Four, five, uh, six minutes, uh, for a lesson. So it's gonna take less than an hour to do all those lessons about the Russian letters. Of course it might need some, it might take some practice to really remember it, but the Russian alphabet is not so hard, it's not as hard as it might look. Then they give you some pronunciation basics, how to pronounce some uh, letter combinations, and then you have again, you have uh, conversational phrases again, pronunciation, conversational phrases, pronunciation, conversation, and lesson 16, grammar. So what I like about that course is first, it's beginner friendly, you don't have to know the letters and how to pronounce them before you take the course. And second, they don't give you a lot of hard, complicated stuff in one lesson. They give you some vocabulary, some uh, conversational phrases, they give you some grammar, just a tiny bit of grammar, and then again some vocabulary, conversational phrases, grammar, and so on. And this is how that course is structured. From time to time you will be offered to review your vocabulary and you re review your grammar. Another great thing about Buso that I really like very much is that you will be offered to interact with native speakers. By the way, one of the things that you need to know about Buso is that, unlike Duolingo, it's not free. Well, they do have a free plan and you can use it for free, technically. But to be honest, the free plan doesn't include a lot of very important things, such as um, they have less exercises, they, have, um, they don't have that kind of activities where you are uh, interacting with native speakers, a very good kind of activities. All right, now let's have a closer look at the lessons. Let's take lesson one and see what it looks like, all right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, at the beginning they tell you some important facts about the Russian language and that we use Cyrillic alphabet for it. Mm -hmm. But we don't have, you don't have to know the Cyrillic alphabet for the first lesson. Okay, continue. Привет. Привет. They teach you how to say hi in Russian. Привет. You just need to listen and repeat. Привет. Okay. Привет. 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 Select the word that you hear. Is it привет, да, 
or нет. It's привет. By the way, да and нет, they mean yes and no. She said привет. Okay. Did you notice in Russian я yeah means I? We omit the verb to be in the present tense, so the structure for I am plus name is very easy. I plus name. Yeah, that's true. Я yeah, Саша, пример. I am Саша. Я yeah, Катя. I am Катя. Okay, let's continue. Я yeah, Катя. Я yeah, Катя. She says Я yeah, Катя, which means I am Катя. My name is Катя. Я mm-hmm. yeah, Саша. Я yeah, Саша. Oh, I'm supposed to read and listen. Okay, I'm reading and listening. Я yeah, Саша. Uh, which one is Sasha, the man or the cat? Could be both. Привет. Я Наташа. Привет. Я Наташа. Uh, this young woman's name is Natasha. Is it true or false? True. Here is a tip. When someone tells you their name, we usually reply with очень приятно. It literally means very pleasant. Well, it means nice to meet you. I mean, literally it means very pleasant, but Mm, it's nice to meet you. Привет, я Алексей. Очень приятно. You see, you don't have to be able to read in Russian because they have that uh, the same phrases written in English. Okay, continue. Очень приятно. Очень приятно. Nice to meet you. Привет, я Алексей. Очень приятно. Привет, я Алексей. Очень приятно, she said match the pairs of words phrases. So basically you've already seen that they have different activities, different uh, exercises. They have those um, pictures with a listen and repeat phrase where you get to learn a new word or phrase and you listen and repeat it, right? Then you have uh, um, exercises when you need to um, uh, match something and something like here. Привет means hi. Очень hi. Очень приятно means nice to meet you. Я Катя, I am Катя. Mm-hmm. Uh, later on you will have more exercises such as flashcards, such as fill in the gaps, uh, even speaking exercises when you have to say something in the microphone. You will also have, if you use the premium version, you, you will also have the exercise where you need, need to say something in Russian and that recording would be sent to a native speaker and that native speaker would correct and uh, rank and and rate your um, recording. Как дела? Okay, how would you respond to the question? Как дела? You already you already familiar with the phrases как дела and uh, хорошо. And you are supposed to know the answer for this. Okay. Как дела? Хорошо. How are you? Good. Mm-hmm. You see this is a little like conversation. It's not a conversation, but it's uh, something like a conversation. Привет. Я Наташа. Mm. Привет. Очень приятно. Я Андрей. Очень приятно. Как дела, Наташа? Хорошо. All right. Now you can see uh, the dialogue the dialogue and fill in the gaps exercise. They say their lines, and then you need to pick the right words and fill in the gaps. Привет, я Наташа. Uh-huh. Well, it's easy to take that course when you are a native speaker. <laughs> Привет, очень приятно, я Андрей. Hello, it's nice to meet you. I am Андрей. Очень приятно, nice to meet you. Как дела, Наташа? How are you, Наташа? I'm good. Хорошо. Perfect. No mistakes. Yay, I speak Russian. I am fluent in Russian. After each lesson, you are given this test, how many words you learned, how many days you studied in a row, and how fluent you are. Of course, this fluency meter, well, you can take it seriously, of course, because it just uh, shows you um, how much of the whole course uh, you have finished. It's not like actually how fluent you are. That was our lesson with conversational phrases. Now let's have a look at the lesson with the Russian alphabet. Lesson number two. So in this lesson, they give you seven letters that look and sound very similar to their Latin equivalents. They begin with the easy part of the alphabet, which, is, which makes ah. sense. Ah. Memorize the shape and the sound of this letter. Ah. Ah. Example. Atom. 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 Which is atom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 
Uh, along with the letters, they give you some vocabulary. vocabulary. Е. Е. Еда. 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 Борщ, by the way. True. К. К. Well, к is not uh, the name of the letter. Uh, the name of the letter is К, but К is the sound of the letter. And it makes more sense to give you the sound rather than name of the letter. К. Кот. Кот. Uh, can you repeat this word? Кот. Кот. Repeat after me. Кот. Кот. If you have repeated this word, then you know how to say cat in Russian, which is already great. Mo the most important word in the language. Кот. Кот. Um, кот. Кот. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Listen and exercise. Uh, you listen to it and you click the right letters, right? Yeah. Yeah. A. A. K. K. T. T. M. M. You see, in this lesson, they give you just seven letters and they give you lots of exercises K so that you could uh, memorize them well. So, this is what the Russian course on Busu looks like. What I like about that course is that it's uh, beginner-friendly. You don't have to know the Russian alphabet before you take the course. And it's also, in my opinion, I haven't taken the whole course, of course, but in my opinion, it's well-structured. They give you some words, some grammar, some exercises, a lot of exercises. They give you some conversational phrases along with some grammar, then some review lessons, and so on. And here's another thing about that course. You might be wondering what would happen if you finish the whole course, right? I can't say for sure, but in my opinion, if you just finish that course and nothing else, you wouldn't be listening uh, to anything in Russian, you wouldn't be speaking, practicing, learning any extra vocabulary in Russian. That course will give you just some bare minimum. That will give you that course will give you some basic grammar and basic vocabulary. You'd be able to hold a conversation, probably some simple conversation to tell where you're from, what your hobbies are, and how you spent a day, and so on. You won't be able to understand movies and radio programs as well as you understand them in your first language, of course. Please don't get me wrong, I do believe that the course is good, and especially for beginners, but it's not enough to just take that course if you want to learn Russian. You will need to do more activities if you really want to communicate in Russian and understand Russian. You will need to listen to something in Russian, to practice speaking, learn more words, uh, study grammar, and so on. This course is good, but it only gives you some bare minimum. And I'm pretty sure that a Spanish teacher would say the same thing about the Spanish course on Busso. It's just a bare minimum, I suppose. And uh, I don't think that if I finished that course on Busso, I would be able to speak fluently, understand everything. But I am okay with that, because I do believe that learning a language is a very fun, interesting, fascinating adventure that actually never ends. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. And see you next time. Bye!